Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell down the street at the corner of Route 9 and 495. Uh, but this is not about my day job. This is about uh, my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations, you know that their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Westboro, that means right here, not in Marlboro where I live, not where, you're, where their kids live. No, they want to be home. So the question is, who are the people you need to know? What are the programs you need to know about? Just stay right here. And I've got this wonderful co-host, Shelby Marshall, whom everybody kn knows, um, because she always finds these great guests. We've had this guest be on before. And as we were talking earlier, it's so great to be talking not about COVID. <laughs> so we're going to take, take some time to really be talking about Frank and Mary and you and your future right here in Westboro. So Shelby, whom do we have today? Hi, good morning, Arthur. Great to see you again, as always. Uh, so today's guest is Lester Hensley. Uh, Lester is no stranger to certainly Frank and Mary, but to the broader community. He's served in a number of roles um, um, on boards and committees in the past. And uh, uh, he's on today to talk to us about uh, the master plan, which um, if we reflect back, I think uh, he was our guest last June or December. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, and, um, right. And then it was just kicking off. We were just talking about what it is. We hadn't had our public meeting yet. And, um, unfortunately our town planners couldn't join us today. Jim Robbins, he had another commitment. So, um, uh, you know, uh, did want to acknowledge that he attempted to come, but, but couldn't for other reasons. Um, but Lester's here to talk to us about what's going on with the master plan, because, while we've all been sort of behind the scenes and running our meetings, so has the master plan. Uh, that committee and subcommittees, they've been meeting. So Lester, give us an update, where are things at? Well, thanks very much, uh, Arthur and Shelby. It's great to be back with you and your audience on Frank and Mary. I think that the last time I was was with you was, was May last year and it was right, um, you know, we were all just coming to grips with, with the, uh, with COVID and the pandemic and what that meant. And the, um, the Master Plan Advisory Committee had taken a decision to take a hiatus over the summer to uh, allow the town officials and, and everybody to sort of adapt to this, uh, this new way of life. Um, I think that was a good decision. We reconvened in September and got the committee back together, of course, on Zoom and, and uh, began the work of moving from what uh, through the, the stages of, of the master plan, right? So we were in the, um, in the explores, uh, well, we've moved into the explores uh, phase from the reflects phase. And in the reflects phase, the community was reflecting on what, the, uh, what, what is Westboro and, and what makes it great and um, um, sort of establishing a baseline of, of who we are as a community. And then as we moved in September into the explores phase, the master plan advisory committee began to meet in subcommittees um, for each of the areas of the master plan and begin to explore possible goals for how we will move the community forward and then specific actions as well. So, um, so Lester, we, let me, just for Frank and Mary, if they missed our great episode with you earlier, just very quickly, what is a master plan and what are the um, areas of focus within our master plan? Okay, so a master plan is a forward looking document that expresses uh, intentions and specific goals and actions for a community to take that will shape the community uh, for at least 10 to 10 to 15 years into the future. So it's a, um, it's a comprehensive document that looks at um, all of the areas that touch our lives in town, everything from land use to public facilities, to public health, to economic development, um, to natural, historical, and cultural resources, and explores where we are now, where we want to be, and how to harmonize the often conflicting interests of those uh, different areas that, that define a community. 
And uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, transportation, very much part of that and housing as well. And, and a lot of that is tied into the economic aspect of, of uh, kind of the discussions. Absolutely. And housing and transportation are defined chapters in the master plan as well. Thank you for completing the uh, my memory on them. Uh, we can do this as a team. That's right. um, so there are actually nine chapters in the in the master plan that uh, that will govern all of these these different areas. So you were saying so we've sort of reflected and um, subcommittees have been meeting um, based on those reflections the community reflections and the work with a consultant, and now we're in the explore phase. Right, and the, the product of the explores phase is a draft vision statement for the master plan. So this was uh, has been through several iterations um, at the committee and subcommittee levels, and um, the preparation of draft goals for each of the chapters and each of the areas. And I keep emphasizing draft, 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 because that's what they are. They are yet to be uh, um, vetted by the members of the community, which brings us to the next scheduled uh, public hearing, which uh, the public meeting will be on February 18th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. And it will be held digitally. So this is uh, quite a bit different than the first one that we held right before the pandemic hit and we held that you know at the at the in the cafeteria at the high school and we were in person for that mm -hmm. um, but what we expect to happen at this public meeting is that the the draft vision statement the draft goals and the draft actions will be shared with the community and we will seek community input into those do those resonate do they capture what uh, individuals believe are appropriate goals, are we missing a goal, Would should we recraft these uh, draft vision statement and goals in a different way. And we will, we've planned some creative ways within Zoom to help explore in that process. Because I, that's great to hear because the um, event that the first public meeting that we had was very interactive and I, do you recall, I want to say at least 100 people attended. Yeah, it was about 110, I think, was yep. the, the final count. And so for, for folks who were there, you can call back and, and remember what that felt like. And for those who weren't, I can describe it. But, you know, we gathered in the cafeteria at the high school around round tables. Uh, we were divided into groups. There were members from the Master Plan Advisory Committee at each table to act as facilitators. Uh, we appointed somebody at the table to be a recorder, so essentially to take the notes and capture the thoughts of the participants. And then we reported out to the large group um, mm -hmm. some of those findings, but captured all of the findings that were in that meeting scribbled onto flip charts and sticky notes and physically captured that way. Um, and all of that feedback was then um, aggregated by the consultant and turned into the baseline uh, chapters or the baseline drafts for the, for the subcommittee. So if you can have that vision in your head and now imagine how we do that uh, in, a, in a digital Zoom environment. And fingers crossed, right? Fingers crossed. Well, we've actually had a practice. So okay. um, the most recent meeting on January 27th of the Master Plan Advisory Committee um, had a, a fantastic turnout. So I think we had almost 25 or 30 of uh, people there. And what Zoom actually has a, a, a way for a facilitator to put you into groups and break you out into small groups. And so the facilitator for the uh, February 18th, uh, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. public meeting uh, regardless of the number, and we hope it's it's enormous. We're 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 ready for 150 people to join us. Um, we'll be uh, randomly assigned to at at an appropriate point in the meeting to a breakout session, and the, the we hope that each resident will get an opportunity to go into several breakout sessions on different topics within the master plan. And so much like we're meeting now, we have the, the three windows here. Um, what will happen is your, a little message will pop up on the screen that says you are being assigned to group number eight. Click here to join and you'll click 
the big meeting will disappear and the screen will reemerge and you'll be in a room with hopefully five or 10 other Westboro residents and a facilitator and a recorder, and they will have a topic for you to discuss. You'll be presented with, with a goal, a draft goal. You'll discuss that goal. You'll give feedback. You'll give affirmation if it feels good to you. You'll give criticism if something's missing. That will be captured in the recording of the notes from the group. And, uh, and then when the time is up for that breakout session, that small group, another message will pop up and says, you on, will be rejoining the whole group in 60 seconds and that will count down and you'll click leave and then boom, you'll come back into the big group. So you'll see those 150 oh. faces there. That, yeah. And <clears throat> so that will be repeated. Um, and so if you can make the mental model analogy to the cafeteria, right? We, we're going to just do that on your screen. Yeah. So hopefully folks who, who um, need a little bit of help and guidance can, can buddy up with somebody that will, will help them through the process. You mm -hmm. could certainly have two people sitting in front of a, a laptop or a camera uh, and participating together. So we would encourage folks to do that. So um, given that you'll have a number of different breakout rooms going on at, at the same time, I would imagine it would, won't be something that can be actually filmed, right? Because you'd have all these different sessions, but um, will the larger sessions somehow be filmed, sort of the discussions? So yes, uh, actually the, the large session of course will be in, entirely be, uh, filmed um, and uh, be available for viewing afterwards. What is possible is that the facilitator, so um, the, our consultant VHB will be the facilitator of the entire meeting. They can actually go and drop into rooms. And so several of us, just like we did in, in person, will be floaters. So we'll be floating around and dropping into discussions. And one of those floaters will be Westboro TV. So we will be able to bring Westboro TV along with us to drop in on a group and uh, record a portion of what's going on in that discussion. Right. So we will catch snippets of, of each group, we hope, and what we don't catch on camera, we will be reporting out as we did uh, in person. You know, we didn't right. get to hear everything that was written down even in person, that would have right. taken days. Right, right. Um, so it's, it's very much replicating what happened but uh, in the Zoom environment. Great. Uh, to the point even that you may recall if you attended the in-person session, we did a poll at the beginning of the, the yeah. session. Everybody was handed a little voting clicker mm -hmm. and, um, and that established who was in the room, what was the demographic, what was mm -hmm. the age group, how long have you been in Westboro, right? So th that type of poll will be used as well to sort of break the ice, introduce us to who is in the room. Uh, we'll be able to do that in real time on Zoom. So we're very much trying to replicate the feel of it. Of course, it would be much better if we were in person, but I, I think we can really get some nice work done this way. Yeah, well, it sounds clearly you guys have thought through a plan and um, um, I think we've all been amazed at what technology can do and how it can connect us. So I'm curious and, and so, to know, yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. I think, I think what's so fascinating about it is that actually during these nine months, Zoom, has gotten much better. Yeah. So a lot of the things that you're about to do, the Zoom folks would have had a lot more technical problems doing nine months ago. And, and, the, and the really, to me, the in, I would, just a comment and then a question, but the really interesting thing to me about this is going to be how in a post COVID world, Zoom becomes an integral part of all of these kinds of public meetings, because especially for my folks, for Frank and Mary, who might not be feeling that great that night, you know, or they just don't want to go out after dark or whatever, this may provide a real ideal way for this large constituency that otherwise was kind of missing in action, especially when it was dark, because people were concerned about going out after dark, to really participate, right? So now, ha having said that, one question. So if I am a environmental junkie, and I really want to talk, go because I want to go talk about you know, chapters, the environmental chapter, right? So is that an option or is everybody there going as a, as a general attendee and then you are kind of randomly moving people to these various groups? Yeah, so the, 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 I think at the moment, my understanding is it's likely to be random. Um, 
but the, the, there is an aspiration to be able to put people into groups of their, their preference. Uh, Zoom hasn't quite caught up to that yet. Um, you, you can pre-assign folks to rooms, but you can't do it until after they've joined the meeting. So just depending on the number of people and the, you know, just the sheer volume is going to be difficult. I will say, however, that the, the, we absolutely uh, welcome and invite that expertise and that passion to the particular chapters. And maybe this will be a good time for me to share my screen here and um, and take you to the to the master plan website. So hopefully you're seeing yep. westpromasterplan.com on my screen. Yes. Yes. Great. So um, this is the still the 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 home page for the site, and I encourage people to to become familiar with it. Um, I need to shrink a little bit here just to get below the controls. And there we go. All right, so here is a link here called document library. And if I open that document library, what you'll see is, is um, all of the, the past um, uh, advertising for meetings, the, you know, what is the master plan, master plan FAQs, so you can revisit all of that. Mm -hmm. Some of the historical documents, Westboro's historic preservation plan from 2002, the seven year open space plan from 2018, the affordable housing analysis and action plan from 2020. So um, historical and current documents that are being used as reference points. But under draft documents, you'll see the draft issues and opportunities templates for each of the chapters. So land use, housing, economic development, natural, cultural, and historical, open space and recreation. So if anybody has a, a particular interest or um, uh, preference to comment on any of these, we're, we're trying to keep all of the drafts out there and available and open. And we encourage you to download them, mark them up, um, send them back into the planning department and that input will absolutely be um, be incorporated. That's so, fantastic. I mean, you know, one of the things, Lester, is, you know, you've, you've been doing this kind of work for a long time in the town and everyone talks about transparency and communication and the opportunity to engage. And what you've laid out here is, is fantastic because it's easy, it's straightforward. You know, I can... I can understand what's on the screen, even if I don't really understand what this is all about. Like I get that it's easily laid out and, and organized. So kudos to the entire group. And candidly, I've been sort of on the ideas page. I've not been into the document library. So I'm looking at this going, wow, what a great resource, um, you know, even going forward. So I hope we can kind of keep this, you know, uh, as a historical uh, piece going forward, you know, obviously the draft documents would change to be final at some point, but this is great. All right. Arthur, did you have a comment? Sorry. I was just going to read it. This is really great. And the notion that in anticipation of this meeting, I could go to this page and whatever I'm interested in, I can click. I can say here, here are the, here's what is being thought about now. So that to the extent that I'm participating, whatever group I'm participating in, you know, I can be saying, well, you know, regarding transportation, this is the thing that I'm really interested in. So it's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful tool. So now I've just got one. I have I have one question. So once again, as you know, I am an outlander. I live in far away Marlboro, right? Um, but we share some things in common, right? A lot of your sewage goes through our river on its way to the to to, to uh, Maynard. I get stuck on the same road that you get stuck on, on 495 when I'm going from here to there all the time, right? We have this wonderful new open open space, the, 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 the Burroughs Loop Trail that is connecting people and doing these wonderful things, which leads me to that broader question. So have, have you folks been think, thinking about, as you go through this process, how, how you, you, you I don't, what, not necessarily replicate it, but how you kind of go beyond that to those issues which are, are inherently multi-community issues. You know, where, where like your open, your open space trails make no sense if they stop at the border. They only, right? They're not I dead. Not only, not only do things like that not make sense, but they, they also, if they're not regionalized or, or integrated with the goals of our neighbors, 
um, we sacrifice, in fact, state level funding if we if we're not collaborating, right? So there, there are, you know, the, the big question that comes out of master planning is it's great to dream and, and think about all these incredible things you want for your town, but how do you pay for them, right? And, and we're, we're trying not to obsess on that at the moment because that becomes the last stage of the master plan is, right. you know, we're going to commit to the, the goals and the actions we need to take. And, and it will ultimately be the obligation of the community to figure out how to pay for it. But we do know through regionalization that if we exclude certain towns from our multi-use trail plans, we forfeit certain levels of state funding. So there's a, there's a very strong um, constant reflection on how do we regionalize the interests of Westboro with our uh, surrounding communities, very mm -hmm. strong in transportation, but, but also in recreation, um, in, in cultural and in economic development. All of these things uh, are being considered in respect to our, our neighboring communities. Right. I, it's just I still remember from doing something when I was working with the Economic Development Corporation here, where, where I read this little study that, that in, indicated that the number of jobs in Marlboro and in Westboro combined is greater than the number of jobs in Framingham. Yeah. That, 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 that there, there is actually a, a, a much stronger econo total economic engine here, except that it's divided into like three or four or five communities, you know. Right. Yeah, no, there's an enormous potential and importance in ensuring that this plan is not myopic in that sense, right? It just got to embrace the neighbors. Mm -hmm. So a little example here, um, the draft vision statement that was approved at the 127, the January 27th meeting is available right here. So if you're planning to come to the meeting, and I sure hope you are on February um, 18th from 6.30 to 8.30 on Zoom, um, you might want to click on this this link here and open the. Um, oop, I keep getting my controls in the way. Let's try and hide those again. Um, you might look at the vision statement in advance of the meeting, and so that you uh, shortcut some of the discussion that's necessary in in reading it. Of course, it'll be read in your group, and we will review it. But we have tried to capture in this in this vision statement all of the, the feedback that we received on the website through um, the polling, the, um, uh, through the first public meeting. And it sets out what we aspire to be. And very quickly, uh, without reading each paragraph, I'll leave that up to your viewers, but we, we have selected words to capture the intentions of balanced, connected, desirable and accessible, thriving, multimodal, sustainable, and trusted. And we've tried to weave this vision statement into the strategic plan of the Board of Selectmen under which they are doing the daily, weekly, monthly work, um, the, the now work of, of achieving the shared vision. So that's one way that you can use the document library to prepare for that, for that meeting. I don't know if it's I'm such a like geek or what, but like I'm actually a little um, tearful and have goosebumps. I mean, this is just such amazing work um, being done by um, volunteers in our community. And I look at this and um, I mean, it's, it, it really becomes a significant marker for this community on which to build and going forward. So. Um, Kudos to everyone that has contributed to it at a com committee level, but also to everyone who's logged on and participated and, and provided their input, however they've done that. Because you're right, our people is what makes Westboro great. It's great. Yeah, and, and you know, a master plan historically has often centered on the nuts and bolts of planning, of zoning, of land use, um, and that sort of thing. And this this committee, I think it was, it was really um, uh, prescient and expansive thinking on behalf of the Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board to have what is an unusually large master plan advisory committee uh, on which are represented not only uh, a lot of residents and, uh, and volunteers in particular areas of interest, but all of the department heads of the town that will ultimately be charged with doing a lot of this work. And the consequence is a much richer um, master plan 
into which I think for the first time in many communities that you're going to see uh, chapters on sustainability on and climate change, a chapter on public health. Um, it's not a typical chapter to have in a master plan, but who can ignore it after the pandemic? Who can ignore it after the addiction epidemic? Who can ignore it when we're going to likely be dealing with the mental health implications of you know, what this pandemic has meant? meant. So I think that in, in some respects, we can bemoan the, the COVID era and the pandemic, but I'm always looking to reframe for the positive. And I think there's an awful lot of positive that, that has come from it and will make a much more enriched uh, master plan for our community. It's, it's, just, it's just amazing. It's yeah. amazing. Now, now as, as you know, Lester, my job here as I always say, is to provide comic relief and keep time. So I'm looking at time <laughs> and, and we're getting close to the end of our show. And I know that at the end, I always ask, or before the end, I always, I always ask Shelby, this is a weekly show. One of the reasons for it is to keep people informed about stuff that's actually really literally just coming up, you know? So I know that, and I know this meeting is just coming up, but I want to make sure that I'm checking with Shelby to see if there's anything else she wants to talk about about what's so just what's um, first of all yeah i want to thank lester for coming on uh, lester if you want to uh, share your screen and show folks that invitation uh, to the meeting while i'm just kind of closing things out here um i do want to encourage folks to attend on the 18th um uh, you can contact the planning department if you have any questions on how to join in but that invitation that you're seeing there will show you uh how to do that and we'll make sure the big big invite the colorful piece is Part of the closeout of the show. Um, I would love to have you back, Lester, at some point to talk about how COVID has influenced, you know, what have we learned and how has that changed, you know, maybe kind of the, the, the framework of the master plan, but that's for another conversation. Um, uh, we did move our uh, town meeting date to May 15th. That was a decision by the board last night. So I just want to make sure folks are aware of that as opposed to the traditional March meeting. But in March, we are having the chicken and poultry bylaw uh, public hearing, public meeting, excuse me. It's gonna be on March 4th. Um, uh, and uh, that's what I love about Westboro. We talk about everything from sustainability and you know, mass works grants to chicken and poultry bylaws. And it's what makes our community interesting. I don't even wanna ask with the chicken and poultry bylaw I don't even want to ask. So another day. That's great. That's all great. So Lester, thanks a million for coming back. I mean, once again, it, it's just, I think it's it, one of the interesting things about this, if you were talking to a bunch of the communities in your area, is this could really provide the template for that broader discussion too, that can bring a lot of people together in a way that, that, that's, that actually could get something done. It was really something. So thank you so much, Lester. Thank you so much, Shelby. Always a wonderful to, that you keep finding these great people and moving things along. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this. I really hope you take their advice of participating in this meeting. What a, what a wonderful way, you know, to get out, even though you're not getting out, and really participate in the future of your community. You, you know, you're living there. You're going to be living there in the next 20, 10 and 20 years. You know, this is really shaping what's going on. So thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you all. And we'll see you all on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.